I'm Pastor Mark Buto, and this is another Higher Things Video Short, Apologetics Wednesday. Religion of Islam, the Muslim religion. What do we say about it? How do we approach it and, and interact as Christians? Well, we know that because of 9-11 and other terrorist attacks and war in the Middle East and all those sorts of things, there's a lot of prejudice and, and preconceived notions and a lot of wrong notions about Islam and what the Muslim religion teaches. But if we're going to be good apologists, that is, good defenders and confessors of the Christian faith, we'll do what we always do. We'll bring the discussion back to Jesus. Now, here's the super short history of Islam. It began with a prophet named Muhammad, who at first was seen as somewhat of an imposter and a fraud, but later became the founder of the Muslim religion about 600 years after Jesus ascended into heaven. Now that's when Muhammad died, around the year 632. And Muhammad received supposedly many visions and wrote these down in the book that is known as the Quran. Now in the Quran, a couple of things are made clear that contradict the Christian faith. First of all, God, or Allah, is not triune, not three persons and one God, not one God and three persons. In fact, it is an abomination to think, according to the Quran, that God could even have a son. And this is where we get to Jesus. The Quran teaches about Jesus, but not in the way that the Holy Scriptures do. The Quran teaches that Jesus was only a man, that he was a prophet, and maybe even we could call him Messiah. But he didn't die on the cross. In fact, he ascended into heaven before for the crucifixion and somebody else died in his place. Well, here's the problem. Is if we're discussing salvation and God with, uh, with Muslims or trying to understand it, we realize that if Jesus didn't actually die, then the sins of the world aren't actually taken away. And if Jesus didn't die, he certainly did not rise from the dead, and then all of our salvation crumbles. But we know from the eyewitnesses, from John, who was there, from Matthew, one of Jesus' apostles, from Mark and Luke, who are friends of the apostles and accompany them and learn from them. We know from the gospel writers and even from uh, other parts of history, as we talked about in, in another video and in the magazine, we know that Jesus was indeed crucified by the Romans around the year 30 AD. And not only that, Jesus said repeatedly that when he died, he would die for the sins of the world. Now, that's a pretty big claim. And how do you back that up? Well, he backs it up by rising from the dead. And as we've already discussed, we know that tomb is empty and Jesus is alive. So together, his death and his resurrection are the basis of our Christian faith, that he is the Son of God, true God and true man, the second person of the Holy Trinity, and that he died when he became man, he died for our sins on the cross and rose again on the third day. And, the, and that death, which takes away our sins, and that resurrection, which proves that he has taken away our sins, are the foundation of our faith. Now, Muslims don't believe this as Christians do, and so we want to direct people in our conversations with, with Muslims or about the religion of Islam. We want to direct them always back to Jesus. Who was he? the Son of God, true God and true man. What did he do? He gave his life for all sinners, the supreme act of God's mercy and forgiveness. And how does he prove it? By rising from the dead. This we deliver and confess and teach because that is the basis of our Christian faith. And that's not just the basis of our faith as Christians, it's the basis of the hope for the whole world. For apart from Jesus, apart from his mercy, apart from his forgiveness and resurrection, there is no hope. But in him, there is forgiveness of sins, there is eternal life and salvation. So how we deal with Muslims, we can learn what they teach in the Quran, but most of all, we want to know what they teach about Jesus. And we want to help them by correcting them with the eyewitness accounts of what Jesus actually said and did. And that's how we can lovingly, as Christians, without preconceived notions, without judging them, without uh, uh, being haters, uh, to deal with our Muslim friends, to talk about Islam, and to bring it, once again, always back to Jesus, who he is and what he has done that gives us our hope and our life and salvation. And that's how we talk to Muslims. And you read more about it in the article by Dr. Adam Francisco in the spring issue of The Higher Things, the apologetics issue. You can find the link there below. I'm Pastor Mark Buto, and this has been another Higher Things video shorts.